Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday, everybody. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. Happy, happy Sunday. I gotta turn it back on. I'm be hot. <laughs> this is truly live. Happy Sunday. Okay, it's not showing until now. Okay. It's posted now. Happy Sunday, everybody. God bless you, Sonia Roundtree. God bless you, Norman Bells. God bless you, Claudia. God bless everyone that's getting on. Happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. God bless you, my sister, Camilla Marston. God bless you, my brother, Norman Bell. God bless you, Audrey DeMole. I miss you. Audrey, God bless you, Audrey. Happy Sunday. God bless you, Pastor Faye. Pastor Faye had a birthday last week. Happy birthday, Pastor Faye. Woo-woo. Amen. Let's get some birthday shout-outs for Pastor Faye today. Amen. God bless you, uh, Sister Gwen. God bless you, Sonia Roundtree. God bless you, Marcia Tucker. God bless you, my dear Claudia. I miss you, too. Amen. Happy Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Amen. We thank God for life, health, and strength today. Glad to see you all getting on this morning. Uh, we just thank and praise God for his goodness, his mercy, and his great, great grace towards all of us. So I hope and pray that everyone's well and we have a good word to share with you today. So we just want to see where God takes us. I pray that this word encourages you and blesses you today and just strengthens you in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. Amen. So let's fill it. God bless you, Kisana Martina Bolden. God bless you, prophetess. My sister, my friend. Amen. Yes. Happy birthday, Pastor Faye. Hallelujah. Yes, this morning, God bless you, Brother Ken Holiday Williams. This morning, I will be at 378 East Milton Avenue, Second Baptist Church, Rawway, New Jersey. Um, you have time it's, uh, to be there. The service is at 11 a.m. So if you want to come get, a, get some more word and just be in the presence of the Lord, you all roads lead to 378. East Milton Avenue, Second Baptist Church, Rawway, New Jersey. Uh, they only have an hour of power. It's from 11 to 12, so they will not keep you all day. They have an hour of power. Amen. And I will be their speaker for this morning. Amen. I have a word in due season, so we just believe in God for his best. And I believe they're going to videotape it, so I will share it on my page. But I would love to see your face in the place. God bless you, Suzanne Marrow. God bless you, Sharon Early. God bless you again, K-Love, Ken Holiday williams my brother. God bless you. God bless you, Von A. Jackson. God bless you, Miss Bernice Gallimore. Good to see you last night. God bless you, my Jill. Blessings to you and your son. Amen. You're welcome, Pastor Faye. Let's continue to give Pastor Faye birthday shout-outs. I let her celebrate the whole month. Amen, since I'm the pastor. <laughs> and her little brother, her younger brother. Let's keep be very clear. So we just honor Pastor Faye, my sister, my friend, a mighty woman of God. Amen. And we say to you today, Pastor Faye, the best is yet to come. Amen. God bless you, Renee, real pretty one. God bless you. Good to have you on this morning. God bless you, Sabrina Newkirk. We had a good time last night at the Hope. God, I'm telling you, every service is so different. We had an amazing time last night. It was just like fire in the house last night. It was so amazing. So I want to encourage you all on Saturday nights if you uh, to come on out. Press your way. I know it may be challenging to come on a Saturday night, but come on out and be with us at uh, 69 Myrtle Street, Cranford, New Jersey. Uh, Calvary Tabernacle, we, we meet for service every Saturday night in the great room. Amen. God bless you, Melanie J. Red. Happy Sunday to you. God bless you, everybody. God bless you, Carol Marie. Good to see you on this morning and good to see you last night. Yes. Von A. Jackson says, happy birthday, Pastor Faye Scott Gordon. So we thank God. God bless you, Sister Mary Llewellyn. Sister Mary, we had an awesome time last night. I wish you would have been there. It was so good. Letty Sloan, good morning. Yes, no, I won't be in Asbury today. I'll be in Rawway today, Letty Sloan. So I won't see you today, but God is good. All right, Camilla, get that sound right. Get that sound right, Camilla. God bless you, Pastor Bev. Happy Sunday. Marie, Carol Marie said, yes, last night was so good. Amazing night, yeah. No service. God bless you, Sister Kathy. Love you too. Let me tell you something. No Saturday night is the same. Last night was fire. It was so awesome, so encouraging. Just a night in the presence of the Lord of 
worship and prayer. All right, she's back. A night of worship and prayer and just just an awesome gathering. So we thank God for where God has us for now in our new place. And we're just believing God. I'm telling you just to just for the tangible presence of God and not just to say we had a good service, but for things to change and shift in people's life. And one thing that blessed me too was to hear the testimonies of the people that God is doing things in the midst and even after service. You know, that's what you want to see. Not just have, but we've had good services long enough. We want to see God just continue to do great things in our midst. God bless you, brother Cedric. We pray for, uh, yes, we pray for Carol's granddaughter. Uh, oh, I don't want to mess her name up. Shiara. Very sincere acne on face. Amen. So good last night. Yes. So, Father, we lift up uh, Carol's granddaughter in Jesus' name. We release supernatural healing and strength to her her body on her face in Jesus' name. We command that acne to dry up in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. The acne to dry up in Jesus' name. God bless you, Joanne. Happy Sunday. Joanne says, good morning, my whole family. Good to see you. Amen, Joanne. So we just bless God for his goodness, his mercy, and his grace. God bless you, Naira Carter. Oh, okay. So, Father, we thank you for Naira and Liz as they travel today, Lord. We thank you for traveling mercies that you cover them, keep them, and strengthen them, Lord. Give them a safe trip as they go uh, and travel away today, Father God. We thank you that no weapon formed against them shall prosper in Jesus' name. Give them traveling mercies there and back in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Y'all talking fast. Let me see who else said something. God bless you. Good morning, Liz. I heard some good news for you. I'm happy for you, Liz. Amen. God has moved fast after we prayed last Sunday. So we thank God. I'm not going to share your testimony. I'll let you share it when you're ready to share it. Amen. Amen. But love you, Liz. We're praying for you. And y'all have a phenomenal trip. And just get let God refresh you both as you go away in Jesus' name. Oh, yes, we pray for your oldest daughter in Jesus' name that you cover, Naira's daughter, and keep her in whatever her daughter needs. We thank you for meeting and exceeding every need in her life. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you, Naira Carter. Hope to see you soon. God bless you, my sister Dora Young. I pray that you're settling into your new place in North Carolina. Well, you and your family, give them my love. Amen. Hallelujah. You're welcome, Liz. I'm happy for you. I'm happy for your new beginnings. I'm telling y'all, eight is the month of new beginnings. Y'all better expect new beginnings this month. It's really happening. Testimonies are coming in. Things are happening. Things are changing. Things are shifting. And I'm not just saying, uh, yes, you will definitely, I want to see you soon. I want to see y'all on a Saturday night at the great room. Amen. To be in the presence of the Lord. But God is doing great things in this eighth month of new beginnings. And the new beginnings are not going to stop when September comes, but I, this is just a lot like a jump start. I want to jump start you for this month that you'll continue to believe to see the goodness of the Lord and see new beginnings in all of your lives and in every area of your life. Whatever is not going right, what new beginnings in your body, new beginnings in your finances, new beginning is new beginnings in relationships, new beginnings in restorations that you will begin to see new things in your life, restoration, breakthrough, deliverance, answer prayer. We serve a God that hears and answers prayer. Amen. We serve a mighty God. We say we serve a mighty God. We praise him saying we serve a mighty God. But I want us to know that the God we serve is really mighty and there's nothing too hard for our God. Amen. Nothing too hard for our God. He's great and greatly to be praised. Yes, Lord. So we just bless the name of the Lord. I, I just release God to do great and mighty things amongst you all. Great and mighty things that you know not of. Great and mighty things that you've never seen before. The Bible says, eyes have not seen and ears have not heard. Even neither has it entered into the heart of man, the good things that God has in store for those that love him. So I'm telling you today, I'm, I'm going to get into the message if I keep talking. But yeah, I just can continue to believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I don't care what has happened bad. I don't care what has happened neg negative. If you're here, God wants to chase you down with his blessings. He wants your cup to run over and he wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. Not just to be blessed to hoard it up for yourself, but he wants you to be blessed to be a blessing. Happy Sunday, Suzanne Stevens. Hallelujah. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we had an awesome night in the presence of God last night. And I pray that that anointing just continues to flow through here. In Jesus' name. Also, I'll be in Rawway today. If y'all can make it to 378 East Milton Avenue, Second Baptist Church, Rawway, New Jersey. That's where my journey begun as a little boy at Second Baptist Church, Rawway, New Jersey. And it's just so awesome that they asked me to come back. That's my family church. That's the home church. So I, I just am honored that he has me to come there in Jesus' name. God bless you, Minister Steph. God bless you, Maria. 
and Mike. Just God bless everybody who's on the line. And it's 805. All right, let's go. It's 805. Let's pray. Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you for this day. I thank you for everyone that's listening, everyone that will listen this day, and even in the days ahead, Father God. We just say, have your way. Holy Spirit, have your way today in Jesus' name. And Father, we just wake up this morning with thanksgiving and praise in our hearts, oh God. And we say, Holy Spirit, have your way. As your word goes forth this morning, we say, let your word fall on good ground. Let it ignite us. Let it motivate us. Let it stir us today in Jesus name. Father, whatever your sons and daughters need, we thank you for meeting and exceeding every need for your sons and daughters this morning in the matchless name of Jesus. I declare and decree that no weapon formed against you shall prosper this morning in Jesus name. Father, I thank you, Lord, for new beginnings for your sons and daughters today, Father, in Jesus name, even in the dry places of their life, the things where it looks like nothing's happening and nothing's taking place, or it seems like it's taking a long time, Father, I prophesy new beginnings, new beginnings, Lord, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in Jesus name, in their physical bodies, in Jesus name, in their soulless realm, their mind, their wills, their emotions. Father, I release new beginnings to those that may be de uh, struggling with depression, oppression, fear. Father, we cast out even suicidal thoughts in Jesus' name. We break the power of suicidal thoughts in Jesus' name. And I say this morning, let God arise big in your life and let every enemy be scattered. Father, we bless you for your sons and daughters this day. We thank you for this amazing weekend that we've had thus far. We thank you for how you showed up on last night and for those, for just the breakthrough that was all in the atmosphere, Father God. And Father, we even ask this day, your mercies are new every morning. Father, let something great happen this morning, Father God, in this service and in the service at 11 and all the services globally, Father God. Let your glory fill the houses of worship today. In Jesus' name, all across this nation, let signs, wonders, and miracles follow. Let souls be saved, delivered, and set free, Lord, in Jesus' name. Not just in New Jersey, but all across this nation, Father God, in every country, the country of Australia, Father God, all across every nation, every state, every country, every island, let your glory be revealed in all the earth, Father God, in Jesus' name. So, Father, we bless you this morning. We thank you for hearts of gratitude. We have hearts of thanksgiving. We praise you for this day, Lord. Someone didn't wake up this morning, but we thank you, Lord, that we have breath running warm in our bodies. We thank you for the blood running warm in our body. We thank you that we're able to breathe. We're able to speak. We're able to hear, Father God. And we just come this morning with hearts of praise and hearts of gratitude. Holy Spirit, you're welcome in this place. Father, I pray that you would strengthen your sons this morning, strengthen your daughters this morning, strengthen those this morning that may be a little discouraged or a little weary. And your word says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not faint, quit, and give up. So, Father God, I just release supernatural strength and encouragement this morning to your sons and daughters. We say, Holy Spirit, have your way. Anoint afresh the word of God. In Jesus' name, we loose your spirit to flow. We loose the gifts to flow, Father God. Whatever you want to say, whatever you want to do, we say, Lord, have your way. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Glory to God. God bless you, my daughters. I just want to honor you. I was talking to one of the mothers of our church on yesterday, um, Mom Doris, and she's on, and she just began to prophesy and said, she said, you're going to have an amazing service on last night. And I said, I receive it. And just what you said, Mom, it has come to pass. Last night was phenomenal. So we just bless and thank God, and we honor the gifts of the Spirit. We thank God for the seasoned men and women of God that hear from the Lord, and the Lord uh, brings it to pass. Amen. If you agree with that prayer, say amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. I prophesy breakthrough and change to you this morning. I prophesy open doors for you. Answer prayer. Lord, move for families this morning. Bless the children. Bless their sons. Bless their daughters. Bless their grandchildren in Jesus' name. Those that need jobs, Father, I release jobs today. I'm telling you, it's a lot of people hiring out here. I don't know where, why people can't find jobs. Uh, this is the hour not to be picky. Take what you can get. In Jesus' name, believe God for good hours, good pay, good benefits. In Jesus' name, the Lord is your shepherd and you shall not want. So, Father, we ask that you open doors and make ways out of no way. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Father, we thank you for your presence, for where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes, thank you. Yes, right, Maria. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. All right, I'm going to share a scripture with you today. I already have it in the caption. Uh, it's Psalm 27. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. 
um, and I want this word to minister to you. And it, it's kind of lengthy from the Passion Translation, but it's really, really good. It's really, really good. Amen. So Psalm 27, beginning at verse 1. Uh, and it's going to be long from my translation. So I have I have the Passion Translation. You can always Google and get the Passion Translation. You probably can download it as well. But I'm going to read it, and I just want you to be blessed and minister to it. And, you know, stay focused on the Word. Don't be doing a whole bunch of other stuff. Stay focused on the Word. Amen. Or if you're doing some things, make sure you concentrate, because sometimes we can miss stuff, because we y'all are listening to me, but y'all doing other things. But I want you to take this broadcast this Facebook live service, I want you to be just as attentive as if you were sitting in the building. Amen. And not to be distracted. Amen. And one thing about this, that even if you're busy and you're doing something, you can always go back to this message because it's on the whole page. Amen. All right. Psalm 27. Father, we thank you for your word. We release your word in Jesus name. Father, we thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing. And Father, whatever you want to speak through this word, we thank you for it in Jesus name. Amen. And the heading of my Bible in the Passion Translation says, it says, fearless faith. Fearless faith. All right. So this is going to be, it's a, I like the Passion Translation with the Psalms because it's very poetic. But because it's very poetic, it's, it's a little longer than like the King James Version and others. But it's really good and it's really meaty. So let's feast. Amen. All right. Psalm 27, verse 1 from the Passion Translation. It says, David's poetic praise to God before he was anointed king. All right, the Lord is my revelation light to guide me along the way. That is so good. Father, be our revelation light to guide us along this journey. Guide us along this way in Jesus' name. That's so good. Somebody type in revelation light. The, he said, the Lord is my revelation light to guide me along the way. My goodness, that, that's just good right there. That's a good prayer. Say, God, just let your revelation light. Glory to God. Let your revelation light guide me along this journey. Guide me through my life. Guide me through decisions. Glory to God. Let it lead me and guide me. Cause me to see. Let me see, Lord, things I wouldn't see. Give, give, me, give me dove's eyes. Let me see the things that I would want to, that I need to see, that I may not see. Let me see those things. Glory to God. The Lord is my revelation light to guide me along the way. And let me tell you something. God didn't, God didn't just put you here aimlessly on this earth. He wants to guide you along your way. He wants to guide you on this journey called life. Amen. He, he's given you, and I prophesied this morning that God will just illuminate your eyes and give you eyes to see and ears to hear what he wants to do in your life. Amen. Glory to God. I don't want to get caught because <laughs> this is good. The Lord is my revelation light to guide me along the way. He's the source of my salvation to defend me every day. Lord, I thank you that you defend your children every day. Not just on Sundays, not just when you meet on Saturday nights. He, uh, he's the source of my salvation. He defends me every day. David said, I fear no one. God wants us to live fearlessly. Fearlessly. We're, no, we're to fear nobody and reverence nobody but the Lord. Amen. David said, I'll never turn my I'll never turn back and run from you. Lord, surround me and protect me. This is a good psalm to pray. When evil ones come to destroy me, they will be the ones who turn back. My heart will not be afraid, even if an army rises to attack. I know that you are there in the midst of what you all are going through. You, I, I just released today in the midst of what you're facing, in the midst of what you're going through in your physical body, in the midst of what you're going through in your business, in the midst of what you're going through on your job, in the midst of what you're going through in your marriage, in the midst of, of what you're going through as a single person or as a widow, as a widower. I want you to know that David says, I know that you are there for me. So I will not be shaken. Glory to God. We have to purpose in our heart that no matter what comes my way, the Lord is always there. He promised he would never leave me nor forsake me. So David said in verse three, my heart will not be afraid even if an army rises to attack. Why will not, why will, why will I not be afraid? Because he says, I know that you are there for me. Hallelujah. And I want you to know today that no matter what you're facing, no matter what you're going through, you have to know that the Lord is there for you. Glory to God. Make it personal. Put your hand on your heart and say, the Lord is here for me. That is so good. The Lord is here for me. 
He promised he would never leave me. He would never forsake me. I thank you, Lord, even when I need to make decisions, according to verse 1, that you'll give me revelation light to guide me along the way or to guide me in my life or to guide me in my decisions. Glory to God. This is so good. My heart will not be afraid, even if an army rises to, to a army rises to attack. I know that you are there for me, so I will not be shaken or I will not be moved. We have to come to a place in our life where we will not be moved. Uh, I, I posted last week on Facebook and I said, we have to purpose in our heart. And I post things that I may be going through or I post what I hear in my spirit, but I, I just felt this to, to share. And I'm going to say it this morning because it's coming up in my spirit. We have to purpose in our heart and mind, purpose in our heart that we will let nothing or nobody steal our joy. I'm going to say that again. We have to purpose in our heart and purpose in our life that come what may, come what, no matter what comes up, no matter who leaves my life, no matter who thinks whatever, you got a purpose in your heart that I will let nothing or no one steal my joy. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. You you got you got to you got to be done with joy killers in your life and joy people that want to hate on you. That day is over. Let me tell you something. You got a purpose in your heart. I don't care if it comes from family, friends, a ex boo, a ex husband, an ex wife. I don't care what what the ex it comes from. You got a purpose in your heart that you will let nothing or nobody steal your joy. I'm not going to let a job steal my joy. I'm not going to let a person steal my joy. I'm not going to let nobody steal my joy. The devil is a liar. I choose to let God arise in my life and let every single enemy be scattered in Jesus name. But you have to purpose in your heart not to allow nobody to steal your joy. You have to set boundaries. Glory to God. You have to set boundaries. And if you set boundaries and you take a stand, I'm telling you, nobody can cross that limit. You have to set boundaries. You have to set limits. And let me tell you something. Stop saying yes, yes, yes to a lot of things and a lot of people and you, you're getting drained and tired. Do what you can do for family. Do what you can do for friends. And if you don't feel the grace to do it, say, oh, I'm so sorry. I can't do it. I'm so sorry. The answer is no. I'm telling you, there's a big breakthrough in the answer of no. Two letter word, no. Amen. You have to purpose in your heart. I will let nothing or nobody steal my joy, steal my peace. Glory to God. Steal my sanity. Glory to God. The devil is a liar. Let's give God a praise. <laughs> if I was in a church, I'd be wanting to hear the clapping of your hands. Amen. All right. This is good. All right. Verse three. My heart will not be afraid even if an army rises to attack. I know that you are there for me, so I will not be shaken. You have to purpose in your heart, I will not be shaken. Amen. Uh, verse 4 says, here's the one, this is so good. Here's the one thing, here's the one thing, here's the one thing I crave from God. What do you crave from God? That's so good. You know, we get a crave now. I'm telling you, sometimes I get that White Castle crave. <laughs> I have it now, um, praise the Lord. But that White Castle crave, so we know about crave. We crave macaroni and cheese. One of my friends up here, she showed me some macaroni and cheese yesterday and some beef ribs. She sent me a picture of it. Lord have mercy. And boy, did I have a crave. So we know about a crave, y'all. But verse 4 says, here's the one thing I crave from God. The one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house. Glory to God. That is so good. Verse 4 says, here's the one thing I crave from God. The one thing I seek at above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house. Finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I want to live my life so close to him. That he takes pleasure in my every prayer. That's so good. That the Lord takes pleasure in my every prayer. I'm telling y'all something. God is the God that hears and answers prayer. I'm telling y'all something. God is the God that hears and answers prayer. And that's one thing our ministry at the Hope is surrounded in, is deep rooted in. And I believe we can't go wrong. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I believe God's hands upon our life. God's hand is upon a house of God, a ministry or a church that is anchored in prayer. I can't get away from it. I just wish y'all would I just wish y'all would throw some hearts in there if I got some prayer warriors, intercessors, and gatekeepers up here. I'm telling you, you want to get to the heart of God, stay in prayer. You want to get into the heart of God, pray for people. 
I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you better not get caught up in things and stuff and religious stuff. You better be caught up in prayer and caught up in the presence of God. Prayer is where it's at. The Bible says, the Lord said, and I'm telling you, you will never go wrong when you follow what the Lord says. The Lord says, and my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. I'm telling you, you better get rid of them anniversaries. You better get rid of them dinners. You better get rid of all that religiosity. And I'm telling you, you better make God's house the house of prayer. When you make God's house the house of prayer, you will see signs. You will see wonders. You will see miracles. You will hear the voice of God. You will hear the words of wisdom. You will hear the words of knowledge. I'm telling you, you will hear it, hear it, hear it. We have to come to a place of prayer. If my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I forgive the sins. And what will I do? I will heal the land. That could be the reason why the coronavirus is still lingering in state to state, because the country needs to come back to a place of prayer. We need to come away from the news and get into the good news of God's word and begin to pray. Glory to God. It could be God saying, y'all need to pray some more. Continue to pray. Not just one city, not just one state, but global prayer, worldwide prayer, nationwide prayer to drive out the hand of the enemy in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Nyra Carter. Nyra Carter said, Pastor Mark understands his assignment. Yes, my assignment is to pray. Glory to God. And we're called to pray. You better have a house of prayer. A house of prayer, a, a house where people can come and be prayed for, a house where you can linger in the presence of God, an atmosphere, not just we're going to do this at this time, we're going to do that at that. Sometimes you just need to linger in the presence of God. We had such an amazing night last night in our service to God be the glory. And I just basically had a few things the Lord had dropped into my spirit and we just opened up praying. And I'm telling you, when you open up in prayer, you just see how the Holy Spirit wants to navigate. And we just worship the Lord and prayed worship the Lord and have prayer. And that was, I can't even put into words. It was just amazing. But I'm telling you, God is moved when we pray. We have to come back into the place of prayer and declarations and sit, spending time. Yes. Lingering in the presence of the Lord. We got it. We got, we got too much stuff going on, too much stuff. He said, my house shall be called a house of prayer, not a house of fa fashion, not a house of titles, not a house of this old apostles and all that. We, we believe in the apostle, ap apostolic and the prophetic anointing. We believe in all that. But let me tell you something. He's not moved by all that titles and all that stuff. He wants us to come back to the place of prayer. Glory to God. We got to come back to the place of prayer. I'm going to read verse four again. It says, here's the one thing I crave from God. The, the King James Version says, one thing have I desired of the Lord. And that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. That's the King James Version. But the Passion Translation says, here's the one thing I crave from God, the one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house, finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe delighting in his glory and grace. I want to live my life so close to him. That should be our prayer. I want to live my life so close to God. Glory to God. The Bible says if you draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. Hallelujah. He says, I want to live, David said, I want to live my life so close to God that he takes pleasure in my every prayer. Glory to God. And I remember as a young boy, as a really young boy, wanting to do something for the Lord. Just one, I said, Lord, I want to do something uh, for you, Lord, that'll make a difference all around the world. I just, I want my heart's desire. And if it comes to pass, it's fine. If it doesn't, I'm, I'm good with that. But my one desire was to get on, on the, uh, be on TV and just to preach and teach the word of God and to show God's love. If God does it, fine. If not, I'm okay with it. But one thing that was in my spirit uh, that I heard as a young boy and I asked the Lord, I said, um, I, I just want to make a difference around the world. And I just heard that still small voice on the inside of me say, you can pray. You can pray. You can pray. That was just so sweet. You can pray. And it just did something. And when the Lord put it in my heart, I never realized then where I'm at now. And that's one of the strong anointings upon my life is the anointing of prayer to pray for people, to pray corporately to just pray before the Lord because prayer take, let me tell you something, prayer, true, sincere, heartfelt, anointed, 
Not prayer like the hypocrites to be heard on high. Not prayers to be seen. Not prayers with uh, fancy words. Come on here. I mean heartfelt, anointed, burden removing, yoke destroying prayer. Glory to God. Not prayer to be seen. Not prayer to just walk because you got on a nice outfit and you want somebody to see you. Or not prayer just because you got on a clergy collar. Not prayer because you got on a clergy robe. I, I mean heartfelt prayer. Whether you got on flip-flops and shorts, flip-flops and jeans, flip-flops and sneakers, a t-shirt and shorts. It doesn't matter. I mean heartfelt anointed prayer. When you release heartfelt anointed prayer, you can pray over the phone. You can pray on in person. You can pray on the live stream. When, when it's heartfelt anointed prayer, people sense the difference. They sense it. And that's what God wants. He wants us to stay in that place of prayer. And I know it sounds, I know it sounds old fashioned. I know it sounds, oh, well, you know, what we should be doing something else. I know we like the lights. We like all this other stuff. I'm telling you, you better stay in the house of prayer. Let me tell you this. If the Lord says my house shall be called a house of prayer, the Lord said it. Paul didn't say it. Peter didn't say it. The Lord says, and my house shall be called a house of prayer. I believe that that is the target. And he said it in the New Testament, y'all. My house shall be called the house of prayer. I think we need to uh, kind of like have a, a, a aha moment and be like, you know, we better shift into more prayer. We better shift. If we want the favor, we have to, sh you got to shift into prayer, y'all. Prayer is where it's at. And not prayer like the hypocrites to be, sir, to be seen or heard or whatever the case may be. But I'm talking about heartfelt, sincere prayer. Because prayer opens up the windows of heaven. Prayer opens up the gifts of the spirit. Prayer opens up healing and it opens up deliverance. Prayer, talking to God, communicating with God, inviting God into his house, inviting God in your car. You can have an awesome prayer service right in your house. You don't have to be in church. Corporate prayer is good. We need corporate prayer because there's power. There are things happen when we gather corporately. But I'm telling you, you can take that prayer anointing right home with you. Take it with you. Live a life of prayer. Live a life where you're close to God. This is so good. I, I'm not even finished, but that's okay. If I don't finish, the Lord spare my life. We can always come back next week. Amen. Glory to God. Let me read that one more time. Verse 4 says, here's the one thing I crave from God, the one thing I seek above all else. I want the privilege of living with him every moment in his house, finding the sweet loveliness of his face, filled with awe, delighting in his glory and grace. I want to live my life so close to him. This should be all of our prayer. Lord, I want to live my life so close to you that you take pleasure in my every prayer. That is so good. That is Psalm 27 and 4 from the Passion Translation. I didn't even see that when I was preparing it for today. It's when I read over it earlier. He says, I want, David said, I want to live my life so close to the Lord that it takes pleasure in my every prayer. Amen. And for the sake of time, it's 828. I'm going to shift. I'm going to shift. I'm, I may come back to this next week, but I want to shift to my thought for today. This is good because we'll be here a while. I want to go to... Verse 13, and I'm going to release my thought with you today. Verse 13 in the same, read this, read this in the Passion Translation. Read it this week. Um, I probably will come back to it next week, Lord willing. Um, but I want to lift up verse 13. David says, yet I totally trust you to rescue me one more time so that I can see once again how good you are while I'm still alive. Verse 14 says, here's what I've learned through it all. Don't give up. Don't be impatient, be entwined as one with the Lord, be brave and courageous and never lose hope. Yes, keep on waiting for he will never disappoint you. Now, our thought is going to be taken. The thought I'm going to share with you is going to be taken from verse four, verse 13. Verse 13 says, yet I totally trust you to rescue me. Amen. No matter what you're going through today, I release today that God will rescue you one more time. Glory to God. I prophesy that God will rescue you one more time, that he will answer your prayer one more time, that he, whatever you need God to do, he will do it for you over and over again. He will do it for you one more time. Yet I totally trust you to rescue me one more time. This is the key verse for today. So that I can see once again how good you are while I'm still alive. That is so good. David said in Psalm 27, 13 from the King James Version, he said, I would have fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord 
in the land of the living. I want to prophesy and declare and decree to you today to keep believing. Keep believing what, Pastor Mark? Keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's my thought for you today. Two words. Keep believing. I don't care what rises. Keep believing. I don't care how you feel in your body. Keep believing. I don't care what your checking account says. Keep believing. I don't care what your savings account says. Keep believing. I don't care what it looks like in the natural realm. You got to keep believing. Lord, I'm going to keep my faith in you. For those of you that know, I had given out some mustard seeds. Mustard seed is the smallest amount of seed that you can have. But the worst is if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed that you can say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou passed into the sea. And if you doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things which you say shall come to pass, you shall have whatsoever you say. And I'm prophetically speaking to you today for you to keep believing. I don't care if your body is racked with pain. I don't care how the enemy's fighting your sons, how the enemy's fighting your daughters, how the enemy's fighting your money, how your, I, I speak, Father God, that money that's been tied up and held back for your sons and daughters. I speak release this morning. I declare and decree prophetic release and finances that have been held back. I speak prophetic release and bodies that are sick. I release healing and strength to the, from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet in Jesus name. But I want to stir you this morning to keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me tell you something. Our God has way more power than the devil. God has way more power than any man. He has way more power than any woman. I want to stir your faith today and tell you to keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Your money might be fun and your change may be strange, but keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. You may be depressed or oppressed or whatever's going on, but I'm telling you, it's a new season. It's a new day for you. I prophesy that it's a, that God is shifting some things. I heard it. He's shifting. There's a shift this morning in the atmosphere. I prophesy a shift. I release a shift to you this morning in Jesus' name that that what has been tied up and held back that I shifted into release. I shift a release on this line this morning in Jesus' name. The devil is a lie. Let God arise and let every enemy be scattered in Jesus' matchless name. Glory to God. David said in Psalm 27, 13 from the, New, from the Passion Translation, he says, yes, yet. I totally trust you to rescue me one more time so that I can once again, uh, once again, see how good you are while I'm still alive. You don't need to see the goodness of the Lord in the sweet by and by. You're going to see that when you go home to be the Lord. But I'm telling you, I prophesy that God's going to let you see some things in the here and now. He's going to cause you to feel better in the here and now. He's going to cause you to be happy in the here and now. He's going to cause you to cause you to prosper in the here and now. He's going to cause your ministry to be blessed in the here and now. David said in Psalm 27, 13 from the King James Version, David said, I would have fainted. I would have quit. I would have given up unless I had believed to see what? The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I'm telling you, you got to get away from these demons and get away from all this frustration and say, I'm going to let God arise and let every enemy be scattered. My body will feel better. My mind will feel better. My children will get will, will be better. This I don't care what strand comes out of here, what strand is released. I break the power of coronavirus and you will not come nigh my house. You will not come nigh my dwelling. I plead the blood. I put blood. I anoint the doorpost and coronavirus, you will not cross over and you will not get in in Jesus' name. I, I encourage you today to keep believing to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of living. The number eight, as I told you last week, the number eight means new beginnings. And new beginnings, the number eight means new beginnings. I prophesy new beginnings. Glory to God. You may have retired, but I prophesy new beginnings. You may not be working, but I prophesy new beginnings. You may have pain in your body, but I prophesy new beginnings that you will begin to move, that you will begin to shift, that you will begin to see the goodness of the Lord and the land of the living. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, that the things that plague your mind and bother your mind, that you be free this morning in Jesus' name. The number eight, which we're in the month of August, and the number eight is number one, it's new beginnings. Number eight also is the number of hope. Hallelujah. The Bible said, David said, why so downcast, O my soul? 
Put your hope in God. My hope is in God. The Bible, another song, psalmist said, another psalm writer said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and righteousness. Jesus, blood and right. I dare not trust a, a sweeter name, but ho a, a sweeter frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ's solid rock, I said, you got to put your hope in God. Glory to God. Don't put your hope in a situation. Don't put your hope in the economy. You got to put your hope and trust in God. Number three. The number eight also means new horizons and new horizons means going up. I, I'm going to horize. I'm, I'm going to be new, see new horizons. I'm going to soar. Glory to God. And the fourth thing it means, it means a bright future. Not more, no more doom and gloom. No more all this craziness. No, I release a bright future. So I encourage you today. The devil's going to be the, the devil. The devil's going to do what the devil does. But I'm telling you, our God is greater. Our God is stronger. He, he, he rises up. He, he's our way maker this morning. He's our miracle worker. He's our promise keeper in Jesus' name. So I come to tell you this morning on this great day, this is a double eight, double new beginnings. On eight, eight, I prophesy double new beginnings in every area of your life. Double new beginnings. Eight, eight. Hey, <laughs> not just one new beginnings, but new beginnings all around you and everything that, that concerns you with your family, with your relationships. Glory to God. I want to share some of my assignment I shared last night, but I gave them four points last night. And one of the points was, number one, from Psalm 27, 13, I told the people, keep believing. I tell you today, keep believing. Keep believing. Keep believing what, Pastor Mark? To see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Hallelujah. So that was, I, I tell you today, keep believing. Number two. Stay in expectation. You have to stay in expectation. To stay in expectation means to stay in faith. To stay in expectation is to stay in faith. I gotta take a drink to that because I gotta, I gotta, I gotta get on y'all for a minute. To stay in expectation means to stay in faith. And let me tell you something: you have to stop cursing your blessings by the words that you speak. I'm gonna say that again: stop cursing your blessings by the words that you speak. Proverbs eighteen twenty one says, "Death." And life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You have to watch what you say. Stop saying I'm broke. Stop saying I'm sick. Stop saying I'm lonely. Stop saying I'm depressed. Stop. I'm telling y'all, watch what you say. I always tell people, I say, don't say you're broke. Say you're between blessings. If you say, if, even if you have, I'm not trying to say to ignore the health challenges in your body, but speak life over your body. Say, yeah, you can say this. You can say, I, I'm, I'm going through a health challenge, but I know that by the stripes of Jesus Christ, I'm healed. I know I'm going to get better and better and stronger and stronger each day because God's got me. And he said he said he would never leave me nor forsake me. You have to watch what you say in the hard times. Watch what you say in your marriages. Watch what you say in relationships. Watch what you say in friendships. Watch what you say. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. You don't want to eat the fruit of negativity. You don't want to eat the fruit of, of doom and gloom. You want to eat the fruit of having what you say, because you're going to have what you say, whether it's bad or good. Speak life to yourself. Speak life to yourself. It's easy to speak life while you're in church. How you doing? Oh, I'm blessed. I'm the head. I'm the tail. I'm the above and not beneath. I'm this. I'm that. It's good to have. I don't want y'all to have church jargon. That's a good word. Somebody needs to type that in for me. Don't have church jargon. Don't have religious jargon. Don't have church. Oh, how you doing? Oh, God is good. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. God is good. No, no, no. Let God change your heart and let it come from your heart. Don't have church, churchy and religious jargon. Oh, praise the Lord. Pray. You praise the Lord one minute and then you cuss in the next minute. No, 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 no. Don't have church. Guard. Let God change your heart. Say, God created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit with me and teach me how to say the right thing out of my mouth. Speak his word. Speak his word over your situation. Speak his word. Say, Father, I speak victory over these bills. I thank you that you're my Jehovah Jireh. You promised you would supply every one of my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Maybe you're moving and you need new furniture. Maybe you're believing God to move. If you're believing God to move, let me tell you one thing. The Lord put on my heart. In order, if you're believing God to move or you're believing God for things, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Let me tell you something. 
Ask and it shall be given. Seek and you shall find. You got in order to find something, you got to seek. If you want a new job, you have to seek. If you want a new place to live, you got to seek. You can't stay home and not seek. So it costs nothing to look. So whatever you're believing God for, if you're looking for a new car, if you're looking for a new, uh, maybe you might need a new doctor. If you're looking for a new place to live, if you're looking for a new job, the Bible says if you seek, you would find. It costs nothing to look. It costs nothing to seek. So start looking. I'm believing God for some new things in my life, and I began to start looking. So once you start looking, you'll see what you like, and you see what you don't like. But you have to look, and you have to seek, because as you look and seek, God will give you favor. Favor with God and favor with man. You may start looking, and you might not have all the money you need to, but that's okay. Once you start looking, God may give you favor. God is a big God. He's bigger than your checking account. He's bigger than your savings account. He's bigger than your job. He's bigger than everything that you have. We serve a big God. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above. Let's listen to that. Now unto him, now unto our God. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above for you, not just to have it in the scriptures. He's able to do it for you. He's able to give you favor. He's able to give you breakthrough. He's able to give you answer prayer. Now unto him, Ephesians 3.20, now unto him. We always say it and quote it, but we don't want to stand on it. And I'm preaching to myself. Now unto him, our God, that is able to do, not able. It doesn't say he ain't able. It says he's able to do exceeding abundantly above. Somebody type in exceeding abundantly above. That's a lot. <laughs> One of my, uh, Pastor Faye's grandson, when he wanted a lot back there, he used to say, I want a yacht. <laughs> yeah, he, that's a yacht, y'all. That's a yacht. Exceeding abundantly above is a yacht. Is a lot. <laughs> Amen. But if you want a yacht, you if you want a Y-A-C-H-T, you can have a yacht too because we serve a big God. But that's a lot. Now unto him. That is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask, think, imagine, or pray for. That means he's able to do bigger than what we asked for, bigger than what we anticipated for. You may get a job and you're expecting God to pay you one thing and God may just blow your mind and give you 10 times. You may be looking for a home or a town home or whatever, a place to live and a, a nice apartment and he'll do more. So let's continue to believe God for exceeding abundantly above we say exceedingly but it's not it's exceeding exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power or the faith that works in us amen glory to i just came to stir you this morning i felt led to stir you while we're on 8 8 new double new beginnings i want to stir you i want you to release your faith amen glory to god so number one psalm 27 13 the fourth point I want to give you today, keep believing. Number two, stay in expectation. Keep expecting. And when you expect, expect big. Glory to God. Expect big. We serve a big God. Expect big. Number three, third point is get caught up in the good news of the word. Don't get caught up in this news that we see. We see the, we see the news and we pray. But I want you to get caught up in, in I want you to get caught up in the good news of the word of God. High God's word in your heart, even the more. Amen. Get caught up in the good news of God's word. And number four, stay in prayer and stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Stay in prayer and stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, now those are the four things I'm gonna leave you with. I want to say it again. The number eight in the Bible means new beginnings. Number one is new beginnings. Number two is, uh, number eight is the number of hope. Number three, new horizons. And number four, a bright future. Amen. You say, well, Pastor Mark, all this is so good. You just got all the good stuff. We serve a good God. The Bible says every good and perfect gift come from God, comes from above. We've seen enough evil. We've seen enough destruction. Let's begin to lavish in our great God. Glory to God. Oh, I got one more scripture I want to read so bad. All right. And number four, I'm sorry. So those are the, the four things that number eight means. New beginnings, number one. Number number eight is also number two, the number of hope. Number three, number eight is new horizons. And number four, bright future. I'm telling you, I prophesy a bright future to you all this morning in Jesus' name. 
my assignment for you, which was last night, which I'm going to share for you today. The four things he placed upon my heart to share with the people of God last night and today is number one, keep believing. Psalm 27, 13. Number two, stay in expectation. Expect big. Expect big. Number three, stay caught up in the good news of the word of God. Stay caught up in the good news. The word of God is good news. Get caught up in the good news of the word of God. And number four, stay in prayer and stay sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Glory to God. That's my word to you today. Keep believing. Keep believing. I want you to, to continue to read Psalm 27 and 13, but read all of it was so media. I would I could have kept going. But Psalm 27, 13 from the Passion Translation, it's just amazing. So I love you all today. Uh keep and, and I want to encourage you to start. If you haven't begun, asking it shall be given, seeking ye shall find. Seek. A lot of you have not found things because you have not been seeking. To seek means means to look. Amen. All right, I'm done. Give God a praise. I got to save some of my energy for 11 o'clock. I will be 11 o'clock this morning. If y'all want to come, hear me in Rawway. All roads lead to Second Baptist Church, 378 East Milton Avenue, Rawway, New Jersey, where the pastor is, the Reverend Dr. James W. Ely. I will be speaking this morning at 11 a.m. They will have an hour of power from 11 to 12. And y'all know I'm a person that, that keeps my time and I don't go over time. I keep the time limit. So we thank and praise God. For those of you that cannot make it, you can kind of go on. At, you can go to my page at 11 o'clock because I'm going to share it from the church page. So you can go to my page and you can see it. All right, I'm done. Let's give God praise. Oof, that was good. Y'all, will y'all bless it? If y'all will bless, give God a praise. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we bless you for this day. I pray that this word encourages us, that it, 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 that it ignites us that it lets us know that we can make it, Lord, that we can keep believing you for the goodness of God in all of our lives today, Father God. I release your wonders and miracles to everyone that's watching, and I say, Holy Spirit, have your way in your sons and daughters' lives. Give them a phenomenal week. Even give them testimonies of things that, 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 you, that they're believing you for. Give them testimonies. Through the test they're in right now, give them a testimony. Give them a breakthrough and give them answer prayer, Father God. And let this be a week of new beginnings and breakthrough and new things to happen. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I'm glad you enjoyed it, Sister Mary. If you haven't already, share this video. Share, 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 because there's somebody on your page that needs to watch it. I'm going to go catch my breath and prepare myself for 11 a.m. service, Second Baptist Church, Rawway, New Jersey, 378 East Milton Avenue, 11 a.m. to 12 noon, and then we're out. I love you all. Have a blessed day. If you need me, know how to contact me. Also, if you can, come meet us on a Saturday night. Also, don't forget to mark your calendars. Saturday, October 2nd, we will be celebrating our 20th ministry celebration, as well as my birthday on October 2nd. So if you want to come, message me or Pastor Bev. The tickets for the dinner are $50. That's for your dinner. I'm only charging the people what the Pines Manor is charging me. Amen. We didn't fluff any tickets. That's the price. So they're charging us $50. If you want to come, let me know so we can sign you up and we want to get our money in soon so we can have it out the way. I love you all. Have a blessed day and keep believing in Jesus name. Keep believing what I prophesied that you will see and experience right now, beginning right here, right now, that you all will see and experience the goodness of the Lord in the land of living beginning right here, right now, throughout this day, throughout this week, throughout this month, and throughout 2020, even into 2022. In Jesus' name, I love you. Have a blessed day. God is good. Love you.